Well, here's another piece of the puzzle that uh, was reported by Israel National News uh, regarding the peace process. Record, uh, according to their report, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said on Friday that the United States will present its long-awaited Middle East peace plan within weeks. Pompeo, responding to questions at Kansas State University, dismissed speculation of a substantial new delay in the publication of the plan. And as many of you know, uh, Jason Greenblatt, he resigned. But before he stepped down, he said that the plan is completely finished and ready to be presented at the appropriate time. So we know there should be no, no more delays, especially because it is completely finished. There, Of course, the only delay that there could be is that the Palestinians re- will continue to refuse to come back to the table. And at the same time, we should also know that it's being speculated and reported that uh, the U.S., in some form or fashion, is about ready to meet Iranian leaders, and it could be President Trump and Iranian leader Rouhani, who are they, report, they are reporting that may be getting together in the next few weeks. But again, that's speculation. We don't know that for sure. But going on with the article, it says, We've been consulting broadly throughout the region for two and a half years now, and uh, I think in the coming weeks, we'll announce our vision, Pompeo said, according to the AFP news agency. And hopefully the world will see that as a building block, a basis on which to move forward, he added. Pompeo called Middle East peace a difficult problem, one that ultimately those two peoples will have to resolve for themselves, but we've worked hard on that. Now, certainly the Palestinians have been rumored to have attempted to get back in the good graces of the United States. I don't know how far that's gone, but I think ultimately that's probably what they're going to do. Not only has the Trump administration held back hundreds of millions of dollars of aid money to the Palestinians, now other countries around the world are beginning to do the same thing. And if this begins to catch on around the world, this could uh, spell disaster for the Palestinian Authority. You know, obviously a lot of people were beginning to see the light around the world. Even the UN called out the Palestinian Authority a couple weeks ago. But getting back to the story at hand, if Mr. Pompeo is speaking the truth, we're looking at the plan being released shortly after the Israeli elections. Right now, as the elections are uh, forming, it's being reported that um, the fortunes have changed back to Likud and Mr. Netanyahu's party. So at this time, it's most likely that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu will be reelected. But like any election, anything can happen. Well, now, with this... Um, Talk of a peace plan being declared, and also uh, like my last two reports have fashioned themselves on some of the characteristics of the Antichrist. Many have tried to, of course, point to either President Trump as to be in the future Antichrist or French President uh, Emmanuel Macron. Now, one thing that I have heard time and again regarding Mr. Macron is that, that his name and the meaning of his name declares that he could be the Antichrist. But if we're being biblical, that has nothing to do with the identification of the Antichrist. You know, this is one of the problems of today's Bible prophecy world. People will read a well-known book or something of that nature, and the speculation of the author will all of a sudden become biblical, meaning that uh, just because somebody reports something as, what, as to what they think the interpretation is doesn't make it biblical. Now, let me give an example. Everyone I ever talked to seems like, believes that it is biblical that when the Antichrist takes over, his new uh, financial system, economic system, will be a cashless society. But the truth of the matter is, is that speculation. The Bible has never declared that the Antichrist would run a cashless society. Now, one, what it has said is that the Antichrist will run a mark society, meaning that if you don't have the mark, you will not be able to buy or sell or uh, commence business in the, in the kingdom of the Antichrist, which will be worldwide. But that in no way declares that it will be a cashless society. And again, let me give you another example. If you go into a store and you declare that you want to purchase something such as alcohol, you have to present your identification in order for you, at least this is the way it is in the United States, you have to present identification declaring that you are of proper age in order to purchase alcohol. And once you do that, you can purchase that alcohol with any form of uh, note that you desire, whether it be a credit card, whether it be uh, money, or whether it be a check. 
Also, I was looking at some of the comments on some of my videos over the last week. And again, many of the comments, the, uh, the, the individuals who were making the comments, were making declarations about the end times that simply were not biblical, but were speculation. But they were treating them as if they were biblical. And here's one that's my favorite, is that somebody will put a Bible verse to a speculation in an attempt to say that this is biblical. When in fact, all it is is just your interpretation of that Bible verse, which for the most part, many times it's wrong. And for the most part, many times people do this in order to make their argument for an individual or a an event that they believe is going to take place, thinking that just because they attach the scripture to it, that now it's legit. So all I'm saying is that we need to watch. You need to watch what you're doing. You need to, uh, before you uh, post something or declare something as biblical, you need to look real close to see if, if, in fact, this really is what the scripture is saying. Now, let me give you a couple of biblical facts about the Antichrist and his uh, eventual rising up. Now, the first scripture I want to take you to is 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, a, a departure. Now some will say, well, that's going to be a falling away from the faith. Now I personally don't believe it's interpreted that way. I believe the departure means that it will be a specific event known as the rapture of the church. You know, if it's a falling away of the faith, that could be a number of different generations. We simply could not identify it by any means. But I guarantee you when the rapture of the church takes place, they will know that people have gone. But once this rapture, at least that's what I believe, ha takes place, and it says, and the man, and that man of sin, which is the Antichrist, uh, be revealed, the son of perdition, who uh, opposeth the exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I was yet with you, I told you these things. And verse 6 says, And now ye know what, withhold, what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. In other words, right now the Holy Spirit is holding him back from being revealed. And it goes on to say that the spirit of the Antichrist, or even right now, is being, is, is being worked. In verse 7 it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already, come, already work. Only he who know who now letteth let, will let until he be taken out of the way. Again, that's the Holy Spirit. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, personally, I believe that scripture is clear that the Antichrist will come forth at the beginning of the tribulation period and that will start it. But I don't believe that he will be revealed to the to those uh, on the earth until the midway point. And the Bible specifically talks about this in Matthew 24, and we talked about this in the last video, that that will be the time in which God will say, listen, when you see the abomination of desolation take, take place, in other words, the Antichrist will go into the temple, desecrate it, you're not even to look back, you're to head for the mountains. That is the time when you will know uh, when the Antichrist and who he is. So that's why I believe that uh, when it says in Daniel 9, 27, that the Antichrist will be a part of a peace with many at the beginning of the tribulation period, but at the midway point, he will separate himself from the peace, pro uh, uh, peace proposal and will desecrate the temple and declare himself to be the Messiah. But frankly, I don't care if he reveals he's revealed at the very beginning, but it doesn't seem that to be the way Scripture uh references it since if, if if it was me and i knew who the antichrist was that would be my cue to uh, do exactly what the lord instructed in matthew 24 and that is to head for the mountains I'd, I'd do that right from the from the very beginning but the instructions that he gives in matthew 24 is that when you see the desolation the abomination of desolation take place it is at that time that you are to not even look back but to head for the mountains now let me take you to another verse of scripture that I believe gives some of the best characteristics of the Antichrist that really don't get looked at a lot. You know, I have a reader of mine that uh, is uh, convinced that U.S. President Donald Trump is the will be the uh, Antichrist once the rapture takes place. And we've had various discussions on Facebook and other places 
regarding this uh, very subject. And one time I asked, uh, why is it that you believe that Donald Trump is going to be the Antichrist? And basically what he stated was, we're all personal characteristics that pretty much fit every president that's ever, that's ever been. In other words, that he was a liar, he was a crook, he was this or that. Basically, it sounded like he just simply didn't like Donald Trump. In other words, he failed to give the biblical characteristics of the Antichrist. We know that in Daniel 9, 25 through 27, that the, one of the first stipulations of the Antichrist and his identification is that he will come out of the new revived Roman Empire, which today is known as the European Union. So that in and of itself should say, no, he doesn't meet the characteristics of the Antichrist. But you know what? I'm not going to rule out Donald Trump or any other world leader who's at, at the, that level because it's remotely possible that the Bible could be speaking of, uh, for the revived Roman Empire, it could be that they're speaking of the world leader of that day, or should I say the world empire of that day, and we know that the United States is the most powerful empire in the world. So it's remotely possible that he that the Bible could re, be referring to the United States uh, because of the fact that it is the richest country in the world, the most powerful uh, in the world, and he just happens to be the most powerful man who was elected to that office. But as I've said many times that people have also accused uh, George W. Bush, uh, Barack Obama, and now it's Donald Trump, Trump's turn. But if I was going to be a believer in uh, the idea that Donald Trump uh, is the Antichrist, it would be from this scripture found in Daniel uh, 8, 23-25 that would convince me. Again, if you're going to argue that somebody is the Antichrist, you need to come at me with scripture, not speculation, not something somebody wrote in a book that sounded like that they, uh, they, they took it from the Bible, but they simply must get it from the Bible. And here's what uh, Daniel 23, uh, I'm sorry, Daniel 8, 23 says, says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents, the Antichrist, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. In other words, at some point in time in the last days that there will be a leader who will stand up, take charge, and move on to verse 24, it says, And his power shall be mighty. And there's no question about it. The uh, United States and uh, the power that the President Donald Trump yields is very powerful, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall, pra and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Verse 25, and through his policies also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, meaning that he's going to be a, a, a good businessman. Now, some might interpret that as being he will cause witchcraft to prosper in his hand. I don't see it that way. I see it as him, whoever this person is, that he will make craft or business to prosper. Now, certainly under the Trump administration, that has absolutely happened. And he has uh, also shown himself to be a very wise and astute businessman uh, on the world stage. And going on with verse 25, it says, And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. You know, it's been said that President Trump wants to get this peace process done and over with because he's really pushing for the Nobel Peace Prize. And he believes if he, get, if he does this, he will indeed get this peace prize. And of course, it says, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. Now, of course, many believe that President Trump is a very vain and haughty president, but uh, I really believe much of the time he does tell the truth and what uh, he sees is happening, that's what I believe he tells. But for many, it would not be hard to see him as the person who magnifies himself against God, because that's what the Antichrist will end up doing. So if I were going to argue uh, that President Trump were was going to be the Antichrist, this is simply where I would go in Scripture. But again, the one thing that defeats this right off the bat is that the Antichrist will rise up out of the European Union. And there's something else that you also need to know. It doesn't matter who the Antichrist uh, turns out to be. When the Antichrist rises, he will be rising up as a servant of Satan. And Satan is a very haughty person. So it's not necessarily the characteristic of an individual that you may know right now. You may say, well, he's... Trump just seems like he would be that, that type of person. Well, it doesn't matter who 
turns out to be the Antichrist, whoever Satan indwells, that person will automatically become haughty. They will automatically declare themselves to be a god. They will automatically take on the characteristics of Satan, which means that they will automatically rise up against God, which it says in verse 25, says he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, which is Jesus, but he shall be broken without hand. So we can look at somebody right now and try to pinpoint their characteristics, but the truth of the matter is, if you are going to try to identify someone who simply has not, has not been revealed yet, and the Bible's clear that he won't be until at least after the rapture takes place, and most likely uh, not until the midway point of the tribulation period, you're more than likely going to be wrong. So I thought I would go ahead and, and uh, bring this uh, to, to the forefront because a lot of people seem to be speculating on things that simply uh, didn't fit. But getting back to the original article, just remember that uh, this, this peace plan could very well be introduced in the next two to three weeks. At least that's what Secretary of State Pompeo believes. And you know, I think the point of all of this is this right here, is that the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, that there would come a, t come a day when we would see the day coming. And all of these reminders, these delays, are really basically benchmarks where we can see the day coming. You know, I know a lot of people are getting tired of this and they're saying, oh, I've heard this before. But the truth of the matter is, is they are little reminders and benchmarks that tell you that the day is coming. They're basically breadcrumbs that will ultimately lead you to the end. And there's going to become an end at some point in time. So keep this in mind. And if you don't know the Lord, uh, today is the day of salvation. You know, 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. You certainly don't want that to happen to you. You need to come to the Lord, ask Him to save you today, repent of your sins, and believe that He died for your sins, and from this day forward, live for Him. And you that are Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the description section of this video, click on the link that is provided, and go to my website and get this book. You have two versions you can get. You can either get the free uh, version, which has been written in nine different languages, or you can get the paid version, which is written in English, but it's a book that you can actually hand to your lost loved one. And then you, you'll know that they will have this book once the tribulation period begins. And I guarantee you, they will then start looking through this book and they'll realize that they need to get saved. So I encourage you to make that purchase today. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.